What's going on everyone? Gormy here today. I am bringing you guys an absolute banger today. I am reviewing Zealand's tactic that he uses with Oriental Dragons over on Twitch. Now if you guys do not know who Zealand is, he is the number one FM21 content creator. I'll be linking him down in the description and putting a picture somewhere of him on the uh, page in front of you guys. But the teams that we tested it out with did incredible. It blew me away with the stats that everyone got. Some players did way, way better than I thought they were going to, especially one player in particular that I would hope he would play like this in reality for the club that he plays for. So we'll be going over all of that today. Now, before we do get into things, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you guys do happen to enjoy the video. Also, I'll be linking my Twitch down below if you guys like to check me out. I stream over there Monday through Thursday. I will be back after this upcoming week because i got some stuff going on. But we will be back, so definitely feel free to check it out. Also, I'll be linking the tactic in the Discord down below. So if you guys like to download it, make sure to check that out. And now without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so you guys will see the tactic in the Discord as Zealand Ball. That is what I have decided to call the formation. Zealand calls it Big Boy Pants, but we have called it Zealand Ball because that's really what it is. I've never really seen it played like this by too many people. I have tried it myself in the past with a little bit different uh, style to it, but his style works perfectly. So we have an advanced forward on attack up top, a deep line forward on attack, slightly to the left so both strikers are on the left side we've got a winger out on the right on support we have a center mid on attack an advanced playmaker on support a ball winning midfielder on defend two complete wing backs on support two central defenders on defend and a goalkeeper on defend we play with a positive mentality when we are in possession we play fairly wide pass into space play out from the defense work the ball into the box and play with a slightly lower tempo when we are in transition, we counter press, counter, distribute quickly, and when we distribute, we distribute to the fullbacks. Now, when we're out of possession, we have much higher line of engagement and a higher defensive line, and we have extremely urgent pressing intensity. Now, getting into what I did for the player roles, I put shoot more often on the advanced forward, the deep line forward I left as is, the winger I put uh, the crosses aimed at center, I really hope they fix the wording on that and crosses at center definitely definitely flows off the tongue better now the center mid on attack I have on dribble less move it in channels and tackle harder the advanced playmaker I have dribble less and tackle harder the ball winning midfielder I left as is the complete wing backs both aim their crosses at center and tackle harder and the central defenders both tackle harder as well now they played absolutely phenomenal Every team did. Uh, every team, I believe, finished in the top three, which blew my mind. So that was awesome. Actually, no, false. One team finished in eighth, but they were predicted to finish in 18th. So they definitely, definitely blew away the expectations set for them. But with these set pieces, we ended up doing the elite corner set pieces once again. So I'll be linking that somewhere on the screen as well as in the Discord for you guys to download as well. We did the Elite Corner Set Pieces and the Elite Set Piece Tactics. They will be attached to the tactic for you guys, but if you guys want to have them to where you can put it on every single tactic that you use, I will be putting it in the Discord down below. But now, let's get into what the squads did. All right, so we tested it with three Premier League teams, two teams in Portugal, and one in Belarus. Now, with Chelsea, Timo Werner had 44 goals. Timo Werner had 44 goals. He is lucky he had maybe 14 to 20 this season. He had 44 with this tactic. So hopefully Timo Werner can get to that level in reality because Chelsea fans would love it. Now, Tim Abraham had 25 goals. Kai Havertz had 13. Kurt Zuma, he was one of the main central defenders on the corner set pieces had nine, Mason Mount with eight, and Thiago Silva with eight. Those are the top goal scorers. Now, assist-wise, Mason Mount had 13, Reese James with 12, same with Tammy Abraham, Timo Werner with 10, Christian Pulisic, Captain America, with nine, 
Kai Havertz with nine, and Ben Chilwell also with nine. And the average ratings I absolutely love. So, I mean, having that many players perform that well, and, I mean, some players on 6.9s as well. I mean, the lowest was a 6.7, and that was Billy Gilmore. I mean, no, that was Olivier Giroud, who came on as a sub basically every single game, and Billy Gilmore, who came on as a sub two games at a 6.8. So, I mean, the players played very, very well in this tactic. Now getting to our second Premier League that we tested it with, with Everton. Dominic Cavert lewin had 24 goals. Joshua King had 17, which I love seeing that from Joshua King. That is some good contribution from him right there. Gilfeed Sigurdsson, my boy, had 12. Richarlison had 12 as well. Michael Keane, the main central defender on the corner set pieces, had 9. Hame had 7. Now, assist-wise, Hame with 16. Lucas Denier with 12. Mason Holgate had 7. Allen with 7. Dominic Calvert Lewin with six and Gilfey with six as well. And now to the last Premier League team, we have got Aston Villa. Ali Watkins had 22 goals. Bertrand Traore had 12. Ezri Kansa had eight. Tyrone Mings had six. Keenan Davis with five. Wesley with three. Now, Aston Villa had a much lower goal record, but they still played absolutely phenomenal. Now, Jack Grealish. Only having two goals, had 14 assists. He was the winger in this tactic, and that is what I have grown accustomed to with testing with Aston Villa is that Jack Grealish is going to put up some bigger numbers assist-wise. So he had 14 assists, Matty Cash and Matt Target both with eight. Bertrand Riore also had eight, multiple players with four. So, I mean, everyone's contributing in many, many different ways. But now let's get into the team and player overviews. All right, so as we see here, here is the league table. Chelsea finished in third, Everton finished in fourth, so Everton getting Champions League football, and Chelsea and Everton both basically a one away from being level with Arsenal, which I have no idea how Arsenal won the league, but they did. But Chelsea and Everton both a one away from being able to win the league. Aston Villa was the team that was predicted to finish in 18th, and they finished in eighth, so that is absolutely phenomenal. Everton. They were runners up in the FA Cup, which absolutely love seeing that. They did get knocked out in the second round by Crow Alexandria in the Carabao Cup, so they were probably playing a very, very weakened side. And now with Chelsea. Now Chelsea got to semifinals and everything. Got to the semifinal in the Champions League, got knocked out by Man U, got to the semifinals in the FA Cup, got knocked out by Arsenal, which as we know, went on to win the FA Cup and they beat Everton. And then they got knocked out in the semifinal by Arsenal in the Carabao Cup as well. So Arsenal went God mode this season apparently and could have possibly done the quadruple because they won the league, won the FA Cup, may have won the Carabao Cup, and they won the Europa Cup. So pretty impressive from there end. But getting into the team overview. So we've got Chelsea, Everton, and Aston Villa all finishing top eight. Most goals, Chelsea with 88, Everton with 81, Aston Villa with 61. So even though Aston Villa didn't look like they had a major goal output, they still did pretty, pretty solid and finished in the top eight goal-wise. Now most shots for Chelsea and Everton both in that. Chelsea and Everton also both in few shots against. Best pass completion, Chelsea at 87%. Most possession, Chelsea at 52%. I am happy to say we're finally in tackles one. This tactic is absolutely incredible defensively as well. Everton with over a thousand tackles won. Chelsea with over 900. Same with Aston Villa. So that's absolutely insane. Most dribbles made. None of the teams were in, unfortunately. Most shutouts. Chelsea was in sixth. And then they were in eighth. Four fews conceded with 50 goals against. Now, player overview wise, we need. It always does that. I don't know why it does that. There we go. Timo Werner led the league in goals, and runner-up was Tammy Abraham. So 49 goals between the striker duo. I think Chelsea would definitely take that from those two. Dominic Cavert lewin had 19 goals, as well as Ali Watkins. Most assists, Jaime Rodriguez had 12. Same with Jack Grealish and Lucas Denier with 11. Most shots, Timo Werner, Ali Watkins, Dominic Cavert lewin are all in. Tammy Abraham was in player of the match. He had five. Most was Kevin De Bruyne with nine, though. Most key passes, Jaime Rodriguez had 96. 
Best pass completion, we were not in. Most tackles won, though. Absolutely dominated. Matt Target with 161. Lucas Denye with 150. So those left backs absolutely killing it. As Ben Chilwell is in there as well with 140. And Golo Conte, the absolute, just absolute beast in the midfield for Chelsea, had 144. John McGinn with 131. And Mo Besic got a, quite a bit of playing time to where he got 124 tackles won. That is pretty impressive from him. Now, Ben Chilwell was actually in most dribbles made. He had 33. Most shutouts, Edward Mendy was in eighth with 11. A few was conceded. We were not in. But now, on to the Portuguese teams. All right, so here we are with the first team in Portugal with Benfica. Now, Luke Waldschmidt had 28 goals on the season. Darwin Nunes had 26. Pizzi had 10. Rafa with 9. Lucas Verissimo, I believe is how you pronounce it, had eight. Everton went five. Nicolas Altamendi had five as well. Now, assist-wise, Alex Grimaldo absolutely loved seeing this. Had 21 assists as a left back, so that's absolutely incredible. Pizzi had 11 assists. Luca Waldschmidt had 10. Darwin Nunes had six. Same with Everton and Gilberto. So they definitely, definitely put in the work they did and Quite a few players with some decent ratings as well. All right, so Benfica ended up finishing second in the league, six points off of winning the league. But good thing is we ended up winning the Portuguese Cup and the Portuguese Super Cup. So that is very, very nice. So Benfica ended up finishing in fourth for most goals in the league. They had 67. Most shots for, they were in, they had 517. Fewest shots against, they were in third, they had 252. Best pass completion, they were in fifth with 88%. Most possession, they were in fifth once again with 54%. Most tackles won, they were in fourth with 790. So lower tackle numbers all around in the league compared to the Premier League, but once again, still in the top eight for most tackles won during the season. Most dribbles made, once again, were not in. But most shutouts they were, however, they were in fourth and had 15. A few is conceded they were in third with 30 goals against. So, player wise, we had Luca Waldschmidt and Darwin Nunes in there for goals. Luca Waldschmidt with 18, he finished in third, and then Darwin Nunes was tied in fourth with 16. Most assists, Alex Grimaldo had 17. Most shots, Darwin Nunes and Verissimo were both in there. For player of the match, Pizzi and Grimaldo both had five, which is nice to see. Most key passes, Alex Grimaldo led the league with 128, which is beautiful. Best pass completion, Nicholas Otamendi with 96%, and Lucas Verissimo with 96% as well. Now, most tackles won. Julian Weigel led the league. He had 135, and then Alex Grimaldo with 110. So Alex Grimaldo had an absolutely incredible season both offensively and defense, defensively with having a high amount of tackles and a very high amount of assists for us. Now, most dribbles made, we were not in. Most shutouts, we were, though, however. But Vlachodimos, I believe is how you pronounce it, had 15 shutouts, and then he only let up 30 goals. So he was in there for all 30 goals against. But now on to the second Portuguese team. All right, so we are now here with Oriental Dragon. Now, Eric Mendez ended up having 23 goals. He was an absolute unit for Oriental Dragon. Sandro Costa had eight. Diago Branco had five. Neil Plange, I believe that is how you say it, had five. Martim Agua, Arguas, challenging name, had three. Nico had two. Jal Pinto and a few others had one. Jal Pinto, by the way, absolutely insane player. Um, Assist-wise, Jal Pinto had 16 assists. The challenging name <laughs> had 10 assists. I can't pronounce it, so I'm just calling him challenging. Now, Jal Guillerme had six assists. Martin Alguas, I think that's how you say it, five assists. Brash, four assists. Sandro Costa and Silva had three and a few other players had two or one. So overall, they played very, very solid. Now, competition wise, it, it is kind of set up differently. So give me one moment. All right. So Oriental Dragon finished third in the league. They qualified for a playoff spot, but they did not go through on playoffs. 
unfortunately. So bit of a letdown, but overall still finished in third place. Got some very decent results with them. Now let's look at the team and player overview for Oriental Dragon. All right, so for Oriental Dragon, team-wise, they were in sixth for most goals in the league. They finished with 55 shots for. They finished tied in fifth with 421. They were not in fewest shots against, but they were in the most possession. They were also not in best pass completion. They finished in sixth for most possession with 56%. Most tackles won. They finished in second with 510. Then they were not in the bottom three. So Oriental Dragon, being that they are at a lower level, they they couldn't really adapt to this tactic as well as all the other teams did because Zealand is using this now currently with Oriental Dragon in the Premier Division in Portugal. So definitely keep that in mind with this test. But Oriental Dragon still did pretty, pretty solid with it. And I really like the numbers that we got from Eric Mendez and Jao Pinto for sure. But now let's get to the club in Belarus. Here we are in Belarus with Bate Borisov. So Bate, they kind of play a different schedule. They play at a different time of the year than the majority of other clubs do. So they are currently 12 games into their new season. They won the previous season and they are already in first once again. They are, however, only in first based on goal differential as Dinamo Minsk are breathing down their necks. But Bate Borisov won the Belarusian Cup and the Belarusian Super Cup. So that's absolutely awesome. And player-wise, I mean, looking at what they are already doing, I mean, Signevic, he is, it says he's the best player in the league. Yeah, leading highest league player. He already has 11 goals and 6 assists in 17 games. So this team is absolutely elite. They are very, very good with this tactic because when I came in, they were in second place and then switched them to this tactic. They ended up winning the league and won two cups and are currently in first once again. But now let's look at team overview and player overview for what we can see right now with Bate Borisov. All right, so team overview wise, Bate is number one in goals with 24. Number one in shots, they have 191. Number one in fewest shots against with 50. They're number one in best pass completion with 88%, which is awesome. They are number one in most possession with 57%, which is also awesome. Most tackles, they are in second with 231. Most dribbles made, they are tied in seventh with 19. Most shutouts, they are in second with eight. So, well, they're joint first because Demo Minx also has eight. And then Fuse conceded they are in second by only allowing six goals so far. So, I mean, this Bate Borisov team is absolutely godlike with this tactic. Now let's get into the player overview. All right, so goal-wise, Nikolai Signevich has nine league goals so far. Most assists, we've got Pavel Nikajic. Nikajic has four assists, most shots. Signevich has 42, and then that Pavel Nikajic dude has 27. Most player of the match performances, Nikajic has three. Most key passes, that same guy, he has got 44. Pavel Karasev has 29. Best pass completion, Kopitovich and Yablonski, they are both in the top three. Kopitovich with 94%, Yablonski with 93%. Most tackles won, Yablonski with 36, Stanislav Dragoon with 33, and Filipovic with 30. Most dribbles made, we are not in. Most shutouts, however, we have the most, well, joint most with eight. And then fewest conceded, we are in second with six. So, I mean, Bate Borisov absolutely killing it. And I am sure with what we have just seen, they probably would win the league again. And give them a few seasons of continuously winning the league, getting a bunch of money, they can eventually become a pretty, pretty solid club in Europe, I would guess. But now let's get into some gameplay so that you guys can see how this tactic works out in game.
All right, that is it for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you guys did happen to enjoy this tactic. Now, like I said, if you guys want to download it, it will be linked in the Discord down below along with the set piece tactics as well. So definitely make sure to check that out if you are interested in it. But please, until next time, have a good one. Bye-bye.